your superhero critic and I'll stay super as long as you stay awesome and welcome to this year's Gamuary. And this year we are looking at my favorite video game films. Some of them wouldn't be considered superhero, but it's my show. So I'm going to review what I want to review. Starting with today, Pokemon related stuff. Announced in 2016, Legendary Pictures and the Pokemon Company wanted to adapt a Pokemon medium into a live-action film, and landed on adapting the video game of Detective Pikachu in order to bring the standalone story to the big screen. The movie was directed by Rob Letterman of Shark Tale and Goosebumps, and it starred Ryan Reynolds as the talking Pikachu and centered around a boy trying to solve the disappearance of his father. Dive into Detective Pikachu. Why did that rhyme? Heh, <laughs> rhyme city. Our movie begins at a building housing the most powerful Pokemon known as Mewtwo breaking free of his holding cell, chasing a car, blowing it off the bridge before we cut to our main character, Tim, who is arguing with his friend about catching a Pokemon partner by trying to get him to catch a Cubone. He says, fine, I'll try it. Get my mother's corpse! Why, sir? I WANT TO BE Cubone MAN! Tim throws the Pokeball to try to catch the wild Cubone, but when it breaks out, he is instead hit with a Bone Meringue. <laughs> Tim's friend Jack feels he needs to open up more and learn to live a little, but Tim gets a phone call from the police department his father works for and heads to the bus station to head to Rhyme City. Afterwards, Tim is assaulted by a Lickitung, and we get a small in-film commercial about what Pokemon is, including a cameo from Red from the first game. But the main point of the video is to show humans and Pokemon living together in harmony. Tim meets... One of the biggest things I love about this movie is how amazing all of the Pokemon look, and... To be a huge Pokemon fan as myself, to sit and watch something I grew up with finally get to the big screen was amazing. And the visuals are stunning. And I don't know what else to say about it because I'm just flabbergasted at how well everything meshes together. And I'm kind of nerding out, so let's go back to the re actual review. Tim meets with the captain of the police and learns that his father has passed away, and while the captain is concerned about Tim not having a Pokemon partner, Tim just wants to get the keys to his father's apartment. When he gets to the apartment, he meets Lucy, who is a wannabe reporter who begins asking questions about who he is and what happened to his father. Tim gives her no real answers as he heads up to the stairs to look around. Stairs to look around. Did anyone else notice that Home Alone reference to the movie that's playing in the background? No? Just me? Okay. Tim begins his observations, finding a vial of purple gas that blows up in his face, and we see it gives the army of Apoms a weird reaction. Tim then finds a 21st birthday card that clearly was meant to be sent out, giving us some flashbacks of Tim's childhood and the death of his mother. Tim then finds an intruder in the apartment. I know, no, can't understand me. But put down the stapler, or I will electrocute you. Look at that fluffy unicorn! 
He's so fussy, I'm gonna die! The two of them freak out over the other being able to understand each other as a psycho apom comes in attacking Tim, followed by an entire army of them beginning a chase seed with Pikachu rambling like a lunatic that ends up with Tim jumping down a garbage chute. The Apom revert back to normal as Tim is raving like a madman and we learn that the only he can hear the Pikachu. We then learn that Pikachu is Harry's old Pokemon partner when his name is brought up. The two of them talk about what they know, which is not much as Pikachu has amnesia and doesn't remember anything but feels it in his jellies that Harry is still alive and that they need to find him. And while Tim wants nothing to do with Pikachu, it feels like they need to go. This doesn't happen, kid. It has to mean something. Can you, There's magic can, I, that brought us together, and that magic is called hope. No, actually, that's called plot convenience. The next day, Pikachu is trying to piece things together, and the two of them decide to head to CNM and talk to the reporter that Tim met. We see the tension between the Clifford son and father duo as the son belittles Lucy for wanting to run the Harry story with no proof. Tim talks to Lucy and learns that there may be something going down at the docks. The two of them then head there to find a Mr. Mime. Mr. Mime. They're the worst. Silent but annoying. Does he recognize you? I think he recognizes you. Ugh, mimes are creepy, even in the Pokemon world. They're just as annoying as clowns. Fuck you, hero! Mr. Mime is now put into questioning as Tim pours invisible gasoline on him to force him to talk, playing charades to figure things out. A little detective in you after all. The two of them head to a Pokemon battle cage to investigate as a Blastoise takes on the best Pokemon ever, Gengar, as Pikachu is noticed by someone who knows him and is pissed off that this Pikachu injured his Charizard and promises to tell him anything he wants to know if he will get a rematch against Pikachu. During the fight, however, the trainer gives Charizard the Argas, making him rage. Pikachu tries to let out an attack, but nothing happens. That's right, I went with a fart joke. Sue me. Actually, please don't. I'm, I'm very poor. The fight continues until the two of them run into Charizard's trainer, causing all of his R vials to be smashed, destroying the entire place and bringing a magic harp into evolution, being attacked by the Gyarados. Tim is then arrested and pleads with the captain about his father still being alive, who of course does not want to believe him. Tim then lets out all of his emotion, getting closer to Pikachu. I may not have memories, um, but I know this much. It wasn't your fault. It wasn't anybody's fault. And I'm sure that if your dad was here, he would hug you so hard, your bones would pop. And he'd tell you he's sorry for everything. He'd be damn proud of you, kid. I'm not crying! You're crying! The two of them decide that there is still work to do as a car pulls up and a woman in sunglasses steps out. She then turns out to be Howard Clifford's worker as he reveals that Harry was working for him and wants Tim's help finding his father. He shows them a virtual reality simulation that shows that Mewtwo was behind everything and kidnapped Harry. Tim then meets Lucy, who has gotten information on Howard Clifford. It turns out that there is a Pokemon facility that had a mysterious blackout the same day that Harry disappeared. This film has gotten thicker than my bloodline. 
Lucy and Tim head to the Pokemon facility and begin snooping around, finding Greninja's locked in containment, learning that Pokemon are being experimented on. Tim finds a room that has been destroyed as the facility is activated remotely. Tim then finds a hologram program that has a lot of exposition talk on how the Argas was made and what led to Mewtwo's escape. However, the two of them begin to question what actually happened regarding Harry. Tim then finds Lucy captured by the Greninjas. He seems to be in a sticky situation. Random sound effect. The group start running from the Greninjas, and after breaking into the Torterra enclosure, they run through it. Pikachu then begins to annoy the Psyduck just enough for it to use its psychic attack. However, all is not okay as the Earth starts moving and shaking to deadly proportions as the group fight for their lives and the things become clearer once they realize they are actually on the back of a group of Torterra. Shadow of the Colossus style. Pikachu is hurt while the group is trying to survive and Tim finally calls him his partner. Once Bulbasaur finds them, Tim begs for help. Please. I'm begging you. I don't want to lose him too. I swear someone's cutting onions in this room. Yeah, you're just a little bitch. How rude. The Bulbasaur summons more to help and Tim follows them to a small area where Mewtwo has been waiting for the two of them to show back up, healing Pikachu. Mewtwo then tries to show them what really happened but is cut off as they are attacked from behind by Roger Clifford. Afterwards, Pikachu and Tim argue over believing Pikachu he betrayed Harry. He is afraid that he's going to hurt Tim and Lucy wants to figure out how to run this story. to break the news when the guy who runs the news is the breaking news. Whatever you do, don't run it through Fox News. Tim heads back into the city to talk to Howard about Roger, while Pikachu finds the bridge putting pieces together once he finds a Greninja star. But it's too late as Howard has already transferred his mind into Mewtwo, and everything is planned out as Howard reveals his plan to fuse people with Pokemon using the R gas inside of the Mewtwo begins his plan of fusing everyone into their Pokemon partners, including Lucy. Pikachu gets to the city and realizes what's going on, setting out to stop Mewtwo, starting a Poke Battle between the two of them. Tim, however, finds Howard locked in a cabinet, revealing that the other Howard is actually a ditto in disguise that begins to kick Tim's ass while Pikachu is dealing with a gassed Pidgeot. Pikachu then uses Volt Tackle on Mewtwo. The real Howard then saves Tim's life. Ditto comes back, however, knocking Howard out, but gets super gassed, knocking it out. Howard, too, believes he has won, but Pikachu reminds him he just needs a distraction as Tim takes off the device, keeping Howard in Mewtwo's body. Mewtwo then reverses everything that Howard did. Lucy then gets a win when Howard promises to give her a story. Tim and Lucy set up a date, and it's then revealed that Harry has actually been inside of the Pikachu the entire time before we get a white flash. And our movie ends with Ryan Reynolds finally showing his face as the father and son decide it's time to fix their relationship as Tim chooses to move in with his father. Like I said before, this movie is amazing. While the film has mixed reviews, it grossed over $400 million on a $150 million budget, becoming the second highest grossing video game adaptation right behind Warcraft, shocking the studios because they underestimated the amount of Pokemon nerds that there are in the world. Between the great story and stunning effects, the film is what Pokemon fans had been waiting for in regards to a live-action film. And as I said, with the visuals, the original story, it's not focusing on Ash or Red, and 
overall, just the feel of it being a giant Pokemon spectacle, I l love this film. But, if y'all would join me next week for something that not a lot of people like, but it will double your pleasure and double your fun. I'm not talking about gum. We're talking about double dragon. Please God help me. I want to be the very best Like no one ever was To catch them is my real test To train them is my cause